Wenatchee is gorgeous in the spring with its lush green rolling hills, abundant wildflowers everywhere, and the views of the Columbia River. The local food scene offers an abundant selection of authentic international cuisines featuring the unique farm fresh ingredients of the region. Wenatchee is also home to award-winning wines, handcrafted hard ciders, and a talented handful of local brewers producing fine craft beers. Visit Wenatchee, the heart of Washington State. New on Curiosity Stream. With superior armies comes superior weapons. How has innovation mechanized the battlefield? From bullets to battleships and everything in between, it's machinery of warfare. Plus... From the gross Ew. to the gourmet, mm. see how that in-flight meal lands on your tray table. On secrets of your airline food, it's all on Curiosity Stream. Annual plans are twenty dollars, just a dollar sixty-seven a month. Visit curiositystream.com. Hey, this is BJ. Thanks for listening to our show's podcast. If you're a fan of all things geeky, you should check out my other podcast, BJ Shay's Geek Nation. We have new episodes every day, and you can check it out at bjgeeknation.com. Your wages are being garnished. We can stop that now. It's hard enough to pay your bills when things are good, let alone when a big chunk of your take-home pay is gone before you even get your check. I'm bankruptcy attorney Travis Gagné, and I can stop the garnishment and get the creditors off your back immediately, often the same day as our consultation. Both Chapter 7 and 13 provide bankruptcy relief, but choosing the right chapter is crucial. In a free consultation, we can create a plan to get your finances back under your control. The chapter you choose sets the tone for the next chapter of your life. Please contact me today at ChooseTheRightChapter.com. That's ChooseTheRightChapter.com. 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. It's our 50th anniversary, and yes, we got gear. Oh, do we have a lot of 50th anniversary gear. Man, make sure you get this, because even when it gets close to any kind of gift-giving season-y thing you've got to do, <laughs> this gear is going to be amazing, really. I mean, uh, it looks so sweet, and whatever people want. They want to put stuff on their dome? Okay, how about trucker hats or beanies? We got those. Uh, you want to put something on your torso? Oh, I said torso. Um, we got the short sleeves. We got the long sleeves. We got the light zip hoodies. I mean... I mean, we got it all, and it's got that gold rock logo, like it's our golden anniversary. So uh, you got to check these out. This is some sweet merch, and you can get it celebrating the 50th with us. Go to KISW.com. Let's play Beat Mix. It's time to play the game. Yeah. So It's Thursday, so let's get cracking! Release the Kraken. Yeah, wearing our Kraken gear. Looks oh, like yeah. uh, Joe and Steve are twinsies. Yep. Oh, oh dang. Ooh, Rocking the same shirt. Nice. Yeah, and nice. I see. I can't get, you know, he's got the baseball shirt, Steve. Joe just corners <laughs> the baseball shirt market. I can't wear the Kraken baseball shirt. I can't wear the KISW 50th anniversary. Uh, <laughs> I mean, you know they still- make different versions of this shirt with, like, different way, like, different, like, like words on it, like I said, what's something that says it's Seattle Kraken, Kraken or oh, Seattle Hockey? Yeah. You can you can mix it up, EJ. I got a lot. Let me tell you, I have no have no shortage for any <laughs> Kraken shirt, but I do not have the baseball version. And they just did a big thirty two percent sale that I know Danny took advantage of, uh, which was uh, two days ago because that was March second, which is three slash two, which. Uh, they, it's the, they are the 32nd NHL oh, franchise, so they decided to make that a day yeah, and, and gave a big 32% off deal. Yeah, so dude. is that going to be a thing, Steve? Like the, the March 2nd is going to be Kraken Day? Is that the idea? I don't know. I mean, that's a tough call. Right now, I think it is just because it's like being the 32nd franchise is kind of a thing that they've been talking about. But I think once they start playing, I don't know many teams that really like celebrate being a certain franchise, you know what I mean? Like it, you don't hear about like a team like we're the the, the Vegas Golden Knights like on on March first. Like it's we're the thirty first franchise. I think once you start and are an actual franchise, that kind of goes away. Yeah, well, yeah. you know, but we're also though we're real sports fans. We're not like those Vegas oh, people. Oh, oh, real yeah. sports fans yes, starting up that are. rivalry, aren't you? Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we're gatekeeping and we don't even have the team yet. That's right. That's how I do. Well, we do have the team, but we haven't played a game yet. <laughs> right? Yeah. Let's get to our contestant today. We've got Adam and Shelton. Adam, are you there? Uh, I'd like him to be there. Hold on. Come on uh, there we go. Adam, you there? Morning. Ah, perfect. Morning. All right, Steve, get out of here. Get out. 
for those playing at home, Adam will have 60 seconds to answer 10 questions. Adam, you can pass all you want, but you'll only get three guesses per question. Are you ready? Better powder. Let's get at her. Yeah. Nice. nice. What was the title of the 2005 Bravo reality series, which featured Whitney Houston and Bobby Brown? Uh, pass. Who was Tom Cruise most recently married to? Nicole Kidman. No. Um, pass. What would you call a northern marine creature with ivory tusks? Walrus. Yes. What year of the mid-2000s did Facebook first launch? 2005. No. Four. Yes. Sally Ride was the first female American to explore where? The moon. No. Uh, Mount Everest. No. The Marianas French. No. How many states share a border with California? Four. No. Five. No. Six. No. Which actress is Justin Timberlake married to? Jessica Biel. Yeah. Citronella is an insect repellent that smells like what? Um, lemons. Yes. Who directed the late 50s movie Vertigo? Um, Pass. Ah, one, oh. two, three, four, correct. And uh, Adam was close uh, with that, uh, uh, the uh, Sally Ride one, but she didn't go yeah. to the moon. No, and she did not. A little too specific there with that one, unfortunately. She went to the final frontier is where she went. Yes. I'm a little, uh, I have a question though about the, uh, well, about that guy you talked about. We'll uh, what to wait till Steve's done here. Okay. Yeah. Well, I talked about a couple of guys there, so it'll exactly. be interesting which guy vague. you're talking about. I'm very vague. Well, it's good because Steve's back in here and I you don't want to. Steve, no clues. Exactly. Exactly. Steve, are you ready? Release the Kraken. What was <laughs> Sploosh. What was the name of the uh, what was the title of the 2005 Bravo reality series which featured Whitney Houston and Bobby Brown? Breaking Bobby? No. Uh, <laughs> nice. Bobby and Whitney? No. Lovebirds that do crack? No. Oh, <laughs> Who was okay, Tom man. Cruise most recently married to? Oh, Katie Holmes. Yes. Yeah. What would you call a northern marine creature with ivory tusks? An elephant? No. A rhinoceros? No. Uh, a walrus? Yeah. Yes. Wow, these are for you to say. <laughs> what year of the mid-2000s did Facebook first launch? 2004. Yes. Yeah, Sally Ride was the first female American to explore where? Uranus. No. Um, space. Yes. How many states share a border with California? Three. Yes. Which, act- which actress is Justin Timberlake married to? Jessica Biel. Yes. Citronella is an insect repellent that smells like what? Citrus. But, but yeah, uh, who directed the late fifties movie <laughs> Vertigo? Uh, yes, uh, uh, who directed the late fifties uh, movie Vertigo? Uh, Alfred Hitchcock. Yes, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You win eight to four. Sorry, oh, Adam. Sorry, Adam. Oh, that was that was flipping embarrassing right there. <laughs> <laughs> it was flipping embarrassing, but you know, you try again, buddy. Yeah, you try again. I'm the best. Ooh. I'm the best. Oh, I played the wrong one. This is very exciting, you guys, because we, I play that one from time to time. And uh, Poncho, he sent me a tweet saying that uh, a, a guy by the name of Christian J from Lacey had hipped him to this. But there's a, a YouTuber by the name of Norman Ragan the third, and he did a metal <laughs> version of that song. Are you serious? Yes. Oh, of I'm the best? Of I'm the best. <laughs> and it's on YouTube, and here's a clip. I'm the best! Whoa. I'm I like it, but now, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm loyal to Leo. I don't know how I feel about this. <laughs> well, until Leo does it, you know, we got to be on Team Norman for this one. <laughs> That's amazing. I love that one. Sounds very angry. <laughs> yeah. uh, wow. Uh, the only one that you got to that you missed uh, was the title of the 2005 Bravo series with Whitney and Bobby Brown. I can't think of it. You were kind of close with Breaking Bobby. Uh, it's Being, Being, Bob- Being Bobby oh, Brown was Being the full Bobby title Brown. there. I do remember that now. All righty. Yep. Uh, but, uh, and, you know, you didn't get that, but you got so many more and you got the win. So congratulations. Congratulations, Steve. You're a heck of a guy. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Big win. Big win, BJ. Big win. Big win. All right. Uh, as you know, we like to really uh, monitor Harvard because, uh, you know, at Harvard, uh, we're brainy like they are. So when they come out with a study, we're all over it. Um, 
Did they need to do this study at Harvard? Because here's what they concluded, that uh, we're all pretty bad at knowing when and how to end a conversation. Oh, Do, do we need yeah. a study for this? I mean, maybe some people are good at it. I, I know personally, I suck at it. I, I, I was just having that conversation both on social media and then also in person. Like, I just don't know when it's supposed to end. When you were having that conversation, how did it end? <laughs> the person walked away from me in frustration. <laughs> okay, there you go. It's like, like yeah, Ted, where are you going? Yeah, how, how are you, you end talking? A conver- how do I end a conversation about how to end a conversation? <laughs> it turns out only 2% of the people that they interacted with in this study knew how to end conversations like they ended them when both people wanted like they somehow some way they just looked at each other and they knew okay it's time to end this conversation only two percent of the people know how to do that i had that happen one time where i was just like someone was showing me something on their computer and they were just really into it but it really made i, I did not find it interesting at all but i also didn't want to be rude but my like, oh cool cool all right well cool i, I gotta get and then and then he goes well if you, if you think this is cool check this out. i'm like i really didn't think it was cool no, i thought it was not. pretty apparent that like yeah. i was kind of fading away but i mean i think we're all guilty of that probably at some point where you, you in your head i don't know about you guys but i'm like does this person even care about what i'm talking about oh totally <laughs> and then i just shut it down and they're like what else happened i'm like oh i thought you were bored i'm sorry are you are you now here's here's something that i i found people have told me i've only done it a couple times but they said you know what dude this was life altering when you asked me this question and these i only do with really really close friends uh-huh. as they're in a conversation I'll just look at them and I'll say, do you have any idea whether I give an F about what you're talking about right now? I mean, I literally say it that way. Well, that's one way to end the conversation. And they look at me and I, and I, say, and I always follow it up with, I'm not saying I don't or I do. I'm just asking, <laughs> do you have any awareness of whether I do? Does it like, Because when people are talking, and I've had to do this myself, you know, you really don't have an awareness. You don't know if people care. Like, you know, Steve, it sometimes is obvious, especially with, look, I mean, I think more, more so with women than I've seen with men. You can tell when a woman's done with a conversation. If you really pay attention mm-hmm. and look at her face, you're like, oh, yeah, she's way done with this. And yet so many people do not know this. They just don't know. They have no idea if people care. I got to ask, though, when those times that you've asked that question to somebody, were you, did you care? Oh, no, I was way out. Yeah, because I don't think there's ever a time if you cared about the conversation, you would ask that question. Gosh, I right? have some I have some Wikipedia friends who are really, really smart, but they get into that droning mode where they basically go, let me tell you about this and that. And uh, luckily, I knew both of these folks who were up for sort of like, you know, want to be better people. And so I and Steve, you know, one of these people. And I just, you know, uh, and I said, hey, man, uh, you got you got you, you got to know. Do you know? And they really stop in their tracks. And, uh-huh. and I keep asking. I go, listen, I don't want to hear any more of what you have to say. I just want you to know. Answer that question. Do you know? And they look at you and it is just they like they, like that realization. They go, I, I have to be honest. I have no idea. And it's like, wow, it's great to be in a conversation with somebody who doesn't care if I'm listening or not. And that really, I mean, I tell you, it pumped the brakes on them. And they've both come up to me later in life and said, dude, I can't tell you how helpful that was because I now start paying attention to see if people actually care about what I'm talking about. And they end up ending conversations a little earlier, which I think is merciful for many people. Oh, man, we need technology, like something that's like, like I'm sure sometime in the future, like you'll start talking and it'll just something that goes across their forehead that just says, don't care. And then you just move on oh. to the next thing. <laughs> Wouldn't that be awesome if you just had that? That would be fantastic. You know what's the ones I always, I, and I suck at small talk when you run into somebody or you're at a party and it's like, okay, you know, my wife's in the bed. That, that's always when I never go to my wife's friend stuff. And they're all super nice. But like when she goes to the bathroom, it's like pure anxiety for me. Oh, I'm like, yeah. Unless I know someone there. Because there's now some of her friends that have become pretty good friends. And like I can easily just BS with them. I'm like, where's Tyler? I could talk to him. I know him, and I, I like having a conversation with him. But sometimes you're just like you'll get into this small talk with someone, and it's fun for a couple of minutes, and then you hit that wall where both of you are like, all right, now we're just awkwardly staring at each other. We had a good moment, but now it's over. And how do you get out of this? Yeah, <laughs> I'm just like, when is my? How long is it taking for it in the bathroom? Come on! Oh, that's a beating, man. It would be nice if the two of you could just look at each other and go. Dude, you're not much for this conversation, no. And then you're like, yeah, neither am I. But I'm sure you're a good guy. But yeah. I, this just let, let's just go our separate ways. That was fun. See you later. Yeah. Do you feel badly though being by yourself, like when you know you're at a place you don't know anybody, and like she said, she's off to the bathroom? Because not, I feel bad being by myself. I feel like weird, like there's nobody around me. Oh, but I don't want to talk to people. But I also don't like being the guy standing there by himself. Uh, as long as there's food to pick out, I don't care. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's true though. Like, because then people come over by the food, and you have something to talk about. Like, have you tried the strawberries? They're really good. And then they, they try them, and they go on and do whatever they do. And now I try something else. You're right, dude. That's the food is the best thing at all because you can, if anybody's up there, you can go, "Hey, man, what's up?" Yeah, you're absolutely right. Food is like, "Hey, look at these, man. Look at that." I mean, who could go wrong with that? Unless, of course, they go into this long story. Well, you know, strawberries were first originated in uh, the 1800. Like, okay, I gotta go. I gotta be. I gotta. <laughs> Did you know you. that strawberries aren't even actually berries? Yeah, exactly. There's that guy. I was one text says, try teaching the third grade. Kids have no clue when you care or not, and they just never stop talking. <laughs> so it starts that young, huh? It starts that young. Yeah. yeah, I don't know how many like kids can pick up on social cues. They're just like, let me tell you more about my stuffed unicorn. I was, um, I, you know, when I did the seminars up in Canada with my buddy Satien, they used to give us like four or five people and they would stand in front of us and we had to have a conversation with all of them, but we had to keep them all engaged. And they would like give us a pinch or something like they push us or whatever when all of a sudden they got bored. And your job was you had to try to keep them all engaged. And it was like a beat. I had so many like you know bruises on my body. People just give me like you know little little punches, or whatever, but nothing major. What a, but what a just, weird, weird like exercise to do. But it, well, because it was an exercise in do you know if people care? Like especially when you're in a group conversation, and because a lot of folk, a lot of times there are people you're not even paying attention to, but they stand there in the conversation and just die a little bit inside more and more. But the idea that they were given the permission to let the person know in some way, shape, or form, like, dude, you're boring me, uh, is it was, your a, ass. It, was, it was a well, that's a whole different seminar. Uh, but it was a fascinating exercise. I learned how, just quickly how boring I was. <laughs> I'm really have to tell you, man, and I have the bruises to prove it. We got an actor who just shared a story that he was at a party at Sylvester Stallone's house and Sly brought him into his office to see something surreal. What was it? Oh, you're going to hear from this dude at 717 on The Rock. BJ and Mix mornings on The Rock. 99.9 KISW. Wenatchee is gorgeous in the spring with its lush green rolling hills, abundant wildflowers everywhere, and the views of the Columbia River. The local food scene offers an abundant selection of authentic international cuisines featuring the unique farm fresh ingredients of the region. Wenatchee is also home to award-winning wines, handcrafted hard ciders, and a talented handful of local brewers producing fine craft beers. Visit Wenatchee, the heart of Washington State. New on Curiosity Stream, deformed trees, mutated wildlife, and no humans for miles. Ten years after the disaster at Fukushima, see what this irradiated ecosystem can teach us about nuclear fallout on Radioactive Forest. Plus, looking for the most diverse marine life on the planet? Dive into the Coral Triangle and experience a frenzy of wildlife you've got to see to believe on nature's greatest secret. It's all on Curiosity Stream. Annual plans are $20, just $1.67 a month. Visit CuriosityStream.com. Spend less time in the laundry room and more time doing the things you love. Introducing the Samsung Smart Top Load Laundry Pair, now available at Lowe's. The washer's large capacity means you can fit more in every load. Plus, its super speed setting washes a full load in only 28 minutes. Shop the smart washer that will streamline laundry day, backed by Lowe's Price Promise. Based on using super speed on a normal cycle with an 8-pound load, terms apply. See Lowe's.com slash price promise for details, U.S. only. 99.9 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. KISW, The Whoa. Rock of Seattle. Ooh, hello, hello, hello. That was weird. Hello. That was very weird. Am I still here or am I there? You're here. Ooh, like that. Well, anyway, uh, it is The Rock. And um, you guys know uh, Frank Grillo. He's a very little known actor. I do <laughs> remember that name. I know. Oh. I saw something where he was in The Avengers. Yeah, he was Crossbones. All right. Oh, there we go. Captain Thank America's you, guy, right? Yep. Okay. Uh, yeah. The bad guy, and then he that was short lived. All right. I Spoiled knew. I, I knew. I knew that dude from something recent. Yeah. He, he um he just shared this really cool story about a time that he was at Sylvester Stallone's house to watch a boxing match. Which right off the bat, I mean, who who's who's going to turn that down? Me. I don't, don't want to hang out. It depends on the snacks that they have, of course. Yeah, of course. <laughs> I don't even. I'm, I'm not a boxing fan, but I mean, Sly Stallone says, "Hey, you want to go boy? I said, boxing. I'm like, yeah. I'm, I'm going to do it." <laughs> and so, uh, yeah, if, if Sly Stallone said, "Hey, do you want to come over and watch the Masters?" I'd be like, "Sure, man. Love golf. Yeah, I'm all about the golf." 
Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you'll you'll find out soon enough how much all about the golf you are. But it's still, yeah, I, I'm with you. And Frank Grillo did that, man. He was at a, and how, guess who was at this party, man? Arnold Schwarzenegger, Al Pacino, Bill Burr, Sugar Ray Leonard, Michael Strahan, David Blaine and Guy Fieri. I mean, what? I mean, this is a who's who of awesome at this party. It's just like, what? You got magic and also food. They, oh, two yeah. Two of my favorite things. <laughs> and Sly, Sly Stallone. Three of my favorite things. I mean, I, I mean, I, I, Al Pacino I mean, the, 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 and Guy Fieri and David Blaine. If you told me, like, you know, who, who would be at this party, I would never have put that group together. So Frank Grillo, who obviously is the least known out of all of them, is probably just happy to be hanging with his crew because, uh, it, I mean, the rest of those folks are very, very well known. Do you known. think he's posting up next to Bill Burr? Like, how did we get here? <laughs> you know, because Bill Burr's a popular comedian, but he's not Arnold Schwarzenegger level. Oh, ever since The Mandalorian, my friend. Even oh, Bill Okay. Or is more well known than Frank Grillo, but you're right. Those two probably, you're right, are definitely in the lower echelon of recognition. That's for sure. How awkward do you? I, if if you showed up to that party, I'd just be so intimidated. Yeah. Oh, I'm with you, dude. And uh, Frank was saying, man, he's like, this night was surreal. I've been up to his house a dozen times. On that particular day, I think it was it was Bill Burr, Guy it was Fieri. Schwarzenegger, Guy Fieri was cooking, cooking. Uh, he wasn't allowed in the room. He was just cooking. Uh, I had I had Sugar Ray Leonard, Al Pacino. At one point, I, Stra- Michael Strahan was there. We were all drinking a bit. At one point, I got on a four point stance in front of Strahan. I go, I don't think you got it anymore. And, and you see the athlete click in, and he he said, "You really want to do this?" I go, "I want to do this." And then I said, no, "I don't want to do this." And it was <laughs> it's so surreal. Like I'm I'm in the middle of Pacino and Ray Leonard. I'm watching the fight. I think it was the Joshua fight. And at some point, whoever was commentating referenced Ray Leonard. And I'm sitting next to Ray. It's you know. And then there's Sly. I mean, hosting the whole thing. That's pretty wild, man. And I love that Guy Fieri wasn't allowed in the room. Like you just go out there and cook for us, pal. You're not big enough to hang out with us? Like, that seems so odd. I mean, do you think he was hired to be cater the it event? sounds like it. Yeah. And even still, though, man, they're missing out because uh, Guy Fieri's fun to hang out with. So, uh, but He took him way, to Flavortown. Yeah. What a, what a, wow. And how about this? At one point during the party, Frank was pulled into Sly's office where Stallone pulled out the original Rocky script. At one point, Sly brought Joe Carnahan and I into his office he pulled out the original Rocky script from a Lucite uh, covering, and he read the first three pages to me and Joe from the script. And we're looking at each other going, this is amazing. Wow. I'd be like, Steve. keep reading, Sly. Just keep reading. Dude. Yeah, dude. <laughs> Screw Schwarzenegger and Pacino. Let's just hang out in here. I want to hear you read the whole script. That is your dream come true, Steve, right there. That is your dream. And Joe Carnahan, we've had him on the show. He's a movie dude, like a movie producer or whatever. So that guy is also a somebody. I mean, at least in the world of Hollywood, they all know Joe. And they're all just hanging out for the fight. That is uh, that is pretty sweet. That had been so much fun. Like, Because I would be too... I would be too nervous to be like, hey, Sly, can you show me some cool Rocky memorabilia? But then he just voluntarily brings you into like the office, and I'm sure there's, oh, yeah, there's a bunch of like Rocky memorabilia on the wall. That would have been amazing. I would just hang on there. I'm like, you guys watch the fight. I'm just going to stare at all this stuff in Sly's so, office. And now we've got some pictures, obviously, and I don't know if you, you can, I don't know if they're up on the BJ and Migs page of KISW.com, but there's, there's a picture basically of a selfie with, with Stallone, with Frank, and of course the Rocky script. And I'm thinking, do you feel comfortable enough to ask for a selfie of, you know, like you're at his party? I don't know. I would. That, I, I'm, oh, I, look, I would. Props to Frank for doing it. Yeah. At that point, you're at the guy's house. It sounds like they're all drinking. They're all, and there's other pictures where, like, they're taking group shots. I mean, it seems like they're just all having a good time and just being, you know, regular people partying. And then at any regular party, I'm going to take pictures with my friends. I'm glad you say that because if I'm ever at a party like that, I'm going to ask for pictures then because I would want, I mean, I would, I would want a picture. And I think Frank may, he made out big on that one. That is awesome, dude. That, 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 I mean, man, that's, that's a cool party. It's the lukewarm topic of the day. And Frank Grillo, the actor, said it was like the most surreal moment of his life. Just, you know, being at Rocky's house, watching a, you know, a party at Stallone's, and then having him read the Rocky script and then showing him the original script. Frank is like, this is a very, very surreal moment. And so, watching boxing a boxing match with two of the greatest boxers of all time, Sugar Ray Leonard and Rocky Balboa. <laughs> 
All right. Well, one of them's like real, and the other guy is like, you know, I mean, but yes. Well, one of them ended the Cold War, BJ. Let's say. Oh, yeah. I forgot about that. You're right. Yeah. Okay. Um, so uh, we want to ask you this, man. I mean, that that's a great surreal moment for Frank Grillo. How about you? What was the most surreal moment of your life? You were just like, whoa, can you believe this is happening? 206-421-ROCK, text us at 77999. What was the most surreal moment of your life? We got your calls, we got your texts. After Lincoln Park, on The Rock. BJ and Migs, mornings on The Rock. 99.9 KISW. 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. Actor Frank Grillo just shared a great story about a time that he was at Sylvester Stallone's house watching a boxing match. And, uh, man, it was just a who's who of everybody. Uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Al Pacino, Bill Burr, Sugar Ray Leonard, Michael Strahan, David Blaine, Guy Fieri doing the cooking. He wasn't even, he, Guy wasn't even allowed in the party room. He was just there cooking for everybody. Guy, you're not here to party with us. You're here to take us to Flavortown. So uh, a very surreal moment for uh, Frank Grillo is he's in the office of Sly Sloan and Sly pulls out the Rocky script and starts reading it to him, the original Rocky script. And we we're wondering, how about you, man? What was the most surreal moment of your life? 206-421-ROCK. You can also text us at 77999. Let's go to Darcy and Edenclaw. Darcy, you are on the rock. Hi. Yeah. So um, I was working for Greenpeace in New York and uh, I was a street canvasser and I canvassed to Kiefer Sutherland and Molly Shannon. Uh, so, so a canvasser means what? You're like handing out little pan, like little little circulars or something to people, a piece of paper. Yeah, we're the annoying people on the street with the clipboards. Oh yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh nice. Oh, and, and so you uh, you ran into both of them. Yeah. So the first one was Kiefer Sutherland, and I I recognized him from about like a New York block away, which is a long way. <laughs> And uh, I was working with my coworker, and I go, hey, that's Kiefer Sutherland. And he's walking up to us, and she goes, no, it's not. And she, then she recognized him, too, and she got this real stupid grin on her face. And the only thing I could think about as he was coming up to us was, hi, Kiefer Sutherland, do you want to join Greenpeace? <laughs> <laughs> and then as he, was, as he was walking away, I shouted after him, I love you and the Lost Boys. And uh, this was when he was shooting 24. It was the only thing I could think of. Oh, uh, man. Oh, and man. then uh, Molly Shannon from uh, uh, Superstar. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so she came. I jumped in front of her trying to because you have to try to get people's attention. So I jumped in front of her and I go, hey. And then she she jumped back at me and did the she like mimicked me. She did the same thing. And I looked at her and I go, oh, God, I know you. Oh, wait. I mean, I like your work. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so, awesome. Definitely not cool at all. <laughs> well, you know what? I mean, we 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 all have those fanboy and fangirl moments. That that that's a fact. I mean, mm-hmm. man, it's uh, I, I have been proud of some of my stuff, but that I never thought about that. If you're like in a big city like that, or if you're in L.A. and you're doing that stuff, you might run into anybody. I hadn't even thought of how cool is that. You're going, hey, would you like to save the? Oh my gosh, it's it's Jack Power. <laughs> By order of the President of the United States, put down your weapon. It's a clipboard, Mister Power. I just want to ask you questions for Greenpeace. Take it easy. I like this text. It says, hey, guys, I was once at a party to watch some UFC, and that's when Wes Borland, the Limp Biscuit, and Monkey from Corn just sat right next to me. Nice. Pretty much my two favorite all-time bands. Wow. What do but you do? He says, but since it was a gathering of friends, I had to play it cool and just be like, hey, what's up, bro? You're in a <laughs> oh, band? Really? What's your band? Oh, I hope you guys do okay. No. <laughs> hey, what's up, bro? What's up, bro? <laughs> oh, that's awesome. 206 421 Rock, Texas at 77999. Let's go to Sean in Seattle. Sean, you are on the rock. Hey guys, how's it going? Hey Sean, welcome to the show. What was your most surreal moment? Well, uh, I grew up in California and my dad and I used to go golfing maybe once or twice a month. Uh, One weekend we decided to go out, we're playing a course outside of Carmel, and there's someone behind us playing by themselves. And my dad looks at me and is like, hey, let's pick up the pace a little bit. We don't want to hold this guy back at all. But he just ended up coming up and playing through, and he's like, hey, do you guys mind uh, if I walk through? I turn around, and it's Bill Murray. Wow. Oh. That's so awesome. And it's so cool because you're playing golf. I mean, one of his most iconic roles, and there he is. He's actually playing golf. Exactly. Well, the, the kicker is, is that um, my dad immediately uh, turns in and goes, well, you, you can play through, or you can just finish out the rest of the game with us. I think we're on, like, hole 12 or 13. Well, not much left. 
and he agrees, and my dad turns around, grabs my bag off the back of the cart, throws his on there, and makes me walk the rest of the course. <laughs> oh, well, I really can't blame your father. He's like, yes, yeah, son, guess what? We're going we're gonna to put Bill Murray over here. <laughs> so my big question yeah, is this. I mean, you know, yeah. the fact that you gave up your seat, did he give you a little something for the effort? You know, we ended up with some photos. I, I think my dad and he have some pictures in the golf court I took with one of those old fun favorite cameras and cheers and silver bullets. But other than that, the experience itself was enough. I mean, I didn't hold his bag or tell him which shot to take. Yeah, I, you know, I mean, what a life that Bill Murray is lead, leading, Steve. I mean, what a life he's leading because he just seems to go pal around with whomever. He's like, yeah, sure, I'll hop in your golf cart. And, of course, everybody treats him like a king. Why wouldn't they? Everybody and wants to party with him. Yeah, and he's, like, really willing. I don't know if I were in his shoes if I would be comfortable enough to go up and just hang with strangers, even though I know they might dig me. Man, I want to be like that. I want I want to be like Bill Murray, whereas, like, uh, I'm just comfortable around anybody, and I'll hop in your golf cart or whatever I'm doing. Try it. Go to Chambers Bay today and just walk around and jump into... Oh, they don't have golf carts there, so let's uh, find somewhere else. All right, I'll have to hop Damn on it. somebody's back. Is that what I got to yes, do? Just try that. Around? And then yeah. don't say, just whisper in your ear and go, I'm BJ Shea. Oh, yeah, that'll yeah. work. Yeah. <laughs> that's not creepy at all, especially <laughs> with this Gary Ridgway face of mine. Oh, yeah, that's fine. 206 421 Rock, text us at 77999. Let's go to Tyler in Bothell. Tyler, you are on the rock. BJ Shea. Who cares? All right, Tyler, what was your all surreal right. moment? So, uh, growing up all the way from elementary school to high school, I grew up with uh, Scott Rockenfield's son, the drummer of Queensrike. Uh, drummer of Queensrike, right. Yeah. And uh, one day, he, uh, the son, asks a bunch of us if we want to hang out one day uh, on the weekend. And so we all go to his house, and we're all hanging out in Scott Rockenfield's house. Now, That's growing, up, cool. growing up, I was raised on music like that, so I knew who Queensryche was. So this was a huge deal for me. And so while everyone else was hanging out, watching TV, doing whatever, uh, Scott was showing me his home studio, all of his Queensryche stuff all over the wall. I was just talking to him everything about Queensryche because he even toured with Kiss. And that, you know, I was, so I was kind of uh, geeking out there. Yeah, I was. And Scott's I mean, a super nice guy. Oh, you yeah, oh, you got to hang out with him because I've, ne I've never hung out with him, Steve. I never get to, you know, I never, I've never hung out with him. I've met him a bunch of times. He was always yeah. very nice. Oh, well, see, there you go. I mean, and, and this dude got to hang in his house. That, uh, you know what? If you, and it depends, sometimes if you're in somebody's house and you don't realize that there might be a somebody, and then all of a sudden you start seeing some hardware or whatever, and you're like, whoa, okay. Dude, one of the one times I, I thought of, I, I've been fortunate enough to have some pretty surreal things happen, but I think one of my favorites was a couple of years ago when I went to Orlando to WrestleMania, and I was, I was crashing at our buddy AJ Francis's house. AJ used to play with the Seahawks and actually just announced that he's going to be hosting a show on A&E. Uh, where they're going to go search for different wrestling memorabilia. It's a WWE A&E &A show because nice. uh, he's, he's signed to WWE. He's eventually going to be a wrestler there. He's been training and stuff. But So I go there, and I'm going to crash at his house, and he's like, oh, my buddy Brent's going to crash at the house as well. He's bringing his kid. We're all going together. And I'm like, sweet. That's awesome. So fast forward a few hours later, all of a sudden opening up the door, coming in, it was Brent Grimes, the, the the Pro Bowl player that played with the Atlanta Falcons. You know, I mean, he's, <laughs> he's yep. a guy. And I'm like, he's a guy. And, uh, the minute he walks in, I'm like, holy crap, this is Brent Grimes. Like, this is just so weird. And he couldn't be the nicer nicer guy. His kid was awesome. We played rock band all night and just got <laughs> drunk and played rock band. He's an incredible rock band player. He, he schooled us on every instrument. Oh. <laughs> he could play at the highest level on guitar, on the drums. But the best part, we're drunk. It's late in the night, and we're outside, and it's it, there's like this giant like I don't even know if it was like a like a it was some kind of like it was like a, it was like a bee, but it was like a bee on steroids, and then we saw it was like a beehive, and we're all kind of freaking out like oh great this is happening. Brent jumps the porch like like clears the porch no problem, and just walks over there and just straight up just punts the the beehive. What? What? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? And then grabs the the bee that was flying there and squeezes it with his hand and kills it. Okay. And there's me and a couple of the other guys, and we're just like, what the hell just happened? Let us know next time so we can pull out a cell phone and film this. And he just looks at us and goes, sometimes you just got to be a savage, and walks back into the house. 
And I was like, wow. For the rest of that weekend, whenever we did anything, crushing a beer, just taking shots, I'm just like, sometimes you just got to be a savage. Sometimes I want that on you a shirt. Be. It was so funny. Like, it was just like not a big deal to him. He was just... <laughs> Jumps the porch. First of all, I would break my neck jumping the porch. And he was just like just having a blast. It was it was one of those moments where you're like, wow, I get to just kind of be around the dude and he's just you know, and his kid was awesome. It was just a weird a weird time. That guy picked the right career. Yeah. <laughs> that guy picked the right career. That's a fact. Oh yeah, he was absolute absolute best guy too. I mean, yeah, it, uh, if I see a guy squeezing a bee in his hand to death, I'm like, okay, look, I know you're gonna win this eventually, but usually you get stung. Did he get stung? No. Okay, he's he's pretty hardcore. I have to say, I don't know how that happened, but he's pretty hardcore. And it was just so nonchalant. Sometimes you got to be a savage. He just walks back in the house. I'm like, all right, well, we okay. all feel like little human beings. <laughs> all right. <laughs> well, there you go. We're all freaking out because like, I don't want to get stung. Yeah, that's that's when I realized. Okay, I know. I, here's my man card. I thought there's no way I'm even going to qualify for this after what I've just seen. We got a woman who attacked her roommate because why? Well, because she kept playing the same song over and over. What song? I'll tell you at 747 on The Rock. Today's podcast was brought to you by Travis Gagne, bankruptcy attorney. He's here right now and has agreed to answer more of your questions about bankruptcy. How much does bankruptcy cost? Well, bankruptcy costs, of course, vary depending on what type of uh, case you're filing. There's a certain amount of, of, of court costs and other out-of-pocket costs that you're going to have in any case. Uh, the, the filing fees in a bankruptcy case are, are about $300, whether you file Chapter 7 or Chapter 13. Uh, one of the things to watch out for when you're shopping for bankruptcy attorneys or, or looking at the different cost options is that a lot of times, especially the really cheap uh, places, don't tell you up front about the, all the court costs and whatnot that you're going to have to pay in addition to the attorney fees. So make sure that you get the full picture when you're talking, when you're comparing prices of bankruptcy lawyers on what the attorney fees are, how much your court costs are going to be, so that you can really make a true comparison. Thanks, Travis. If you have more questions about bankruptcy, you can reach out to Travis. Travis anytime at choose the right chapter.com.